We believe in natural entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship that starts from the heart. It is lonely in the beginning. Alone. Solitary. But the founder comes with a strong will. Once started, the journey is not easy. There are a lot of ups and downs. But eventually, many find traction and feel great again. However, that is not yet the end. Entrepreneurship is a long journey. But in the end, it is rewarding. At East Ventures, we understand entrepreneurship. This is our story. A decade of impact. Welcome everyone. Welcome to East Ventures 10 anniversary. We would like to thank everyone that have taken their time to come here. Kai Fung, Rohit, Pak Tom, Pak Luhut, Chief Ra, Pak Frankie, William, Ferry, founders, partners, limited partners, and friends. It has been an interesting 10 years for us. I, I, don't, I don't need to introduce myself, I think. If you don't know us, you might be in the wrong event. <laughs> it's been a very interesting 10 years, and we would like to share our story to you. This is our story. Thank you. Maybe I need to introduce myself. Uh, I'm Batara from uh, East Ventures. Uh, <clears throat> so East Ventures was founded in uh, 2009, uh, 10 years from now exactly. Um, all three of us came from a tech background. So um, I co-founded a company in Japan called Mixi. It was the first social media that went public in the world, actually. This was before uh, Facebook, even before Twitter. Uh, Wilson, at that time, was running his own startup in uh, Singapore. And uh, Taiga, he was in uh, venture capital firm in Japan. We actually have known each other for uh, such a long time, even before uh, his ventures. Uh, me and Wilson, we went to the same high school in uh, Medan, Indonesia. Taiga, the VC firm that he was in, actually was the first investor for my previous company, Mixi. Um, so why Indonesia? several reasons. One is because uh, I was born and raised in Indonesia. I'm always uh, an Indonesian in the heart. We understand the market of Indonesia. Also at that time, we really see the potential of uh, Indonesia. So at that time, the internet user in Indonesia was about 30 million, which was about 13% th of the whole uh, population. And uh, from our experience, seeing how the internet grew in other country, we really believe that uh, Indonesia had the potential for it as well. So we started our first fund um, in Indonesia, and uh, we met William in uh, 2010. Really young at the time, all of us. And uh, I think we really shared the same vision I remember uh, William told us his vision was to, uh, uh, to have uh, economic inclusion by digital technology in Indonesia. And uh, we also found that uh, at the time we met William and Leon, they were very passionate about what they were doing. Uh, we talked to them, I think we had three meetings before we closed the deal. It was uh, 28 hours, I think before we close the deal. And uh, it was uh, one of the best investments that uh, we've made so far. Fast forward to 2011, this is a very historical year for us because we had our first uh, 
exit. We sold a company to Groupon, um, Indonesian company, Disdos. And uh, we also started our accelerator in the same year in Jakarta, which, to be honest, didn't go very well. It was a, a failure, actually. Um, but we learned a lot from uh, doing uh, an accelerator in Indonesia. And in 2012, we set up a, a new fund for uh, Japan. So uh, my name is Taiga. So I'm in charge of uh, investment of Japan. So uh, we start. Uh, So we set up a new fund for Japan in uh, 2012. <clears throat> and so 13 uh, invested in Medicari. Uh, so this deal, close deal in the uh, 30 seconds while crossing Lopong Street <laughs> here. So the street deal. <clears throat> and so uh, 40, uh, one exit. Uh, exit Mary to DNA, uh, m and deal, and two IPOs, uh, Gumi and Adventures, uh, Sky Ticket. And so 50, uh, set up fund, for two, second fund. And one MA, one IPO, Gnosi, a news application in Japan. And uh, 2030, uh, 60, uh, one MA. Uh, started to accelerate the program called Republic with YAF Japan. <coughs> and 70, one IPO user local and two M&A deals. And 80s, uh, so Mercury went public with variation more than uh, six uh, billion dollars and uh, gave EV uh, 100x return on investment. And now, uh, 90, one IPO Tsukuruba, uh, one M&A. And now fundraise for the third fund for Japan. Thank you. Meanwhile in Southeast Asia, in another parallel of universe here, two young gentlemen came to us and said that, Wilson, the first one said, I'm going to drop out from Harvard Business School. We thought that Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, every one of them dropping out from Harvard, right? So we thought, I have no idea what you're doing. It seems like you're doing great things, and they say we want to focus in travel. So that turned out to be Traveloka in 2012. This is how Ferry looks like when <laughs> we try to fundraise to China. And this is how Ferry looks like now. So you can see the difference before and after. I think, yeah, uh, the economy hit his eyesight. Yeah, <laughs> And in 2013, if you notice, why this slide have all these dots? This is the numbers of portfolio that we invested in Southeast Asia. In fund three, we start change our hypothesis in 2013, and we think that e-commerce is no longer the, concern, uh, the, the focus during that time. We see many people from the rural area start doing the transaction. We do see that the, the, the purchase to some of our portfolio um, in the beginning, about 70% in Jakarta, but in 2013, we see inflection point. Everyone actually moved to outside of Jakarta. So this is the first time we realized that there is opportunity beyond Jakarta. We keep investing more and more company in 2014, and start uh, expand our services, not only 
small medium enterprise solution or O2O solution. We also start investing e-commerce services, so the ecosystem around e-commerce itself. In the same year, we invested Ruangguru. We closed the deal in Starbucks, Plaza Indonesia. From now on, we will not close the deal in Starbucks anymore. It has to be in Foray. <laughs> if you don't talk and pitch in Foray, we will not invest in you. <laughs> and thanks to the board member and all the shareholders, the companies grow uh, very fast, rapidly. In 2015, we seeded IDN Media, we seeded Sociola, and we keep investing all the young entrepreneurs and the brightest minds in this country. We have a lot of new friends now. And we start launch our co-working space called EV Hive. It's not because we want to copy WeWorks or anything, no. It's simply because we see clear problems. We always have a gathering between all our founders, and we realize that we need some space so that everybody can share their knowledge, everybody can share the space. So that's what we call EV Hive. This is the opening of EV Hive in 2015. Now in 2017, we got lucky. Redmart acquired by Lazada, Locket acquired by Gojek. So Eddie, uh, today is his birthday. Where, where is Eddie? In 2017, we come out with another new hypothesis. So you can see that our hypothesis is always changed based on the maturity of Indonesia ecosystem. Now we start open up. We think there is a lot of problem in Indonesia. So there will be a lot of opportunity. So we're taking an agnostic approach. As soon as we see a problem, we believe IT solution will be able to solve that problem. And we think that there is opportunity around it. In 2017, we got lucky again. Tokopedia and Traveloka in the same year, in the same month, in the month of August, if I'm not wrong, they announced that both of them become a unicorn, a company worth more than a billion dollars. Yeah, very happy. And we celebrate with Ferry in Nasi Padang, as always, as simple as that. Kudo was acquired by Grab in the same years, and suddenly when we send an LP report, we realized that we have three unicorns in our fund reports. Very exciting time for Indonesia and Southeast Asia. Meanwhile, we keep investing more and more company as you can see the dots getting more and more. So this is when the day when we uh, were invested uh, Kudo in Silicon Valley. Actually, I, I flew to Silicon Valley to talk to some of the young uh, professional. And if you notice, they hide behind everyone. Yeah. Still very shy. Yeah. <laughs> but now they are different when they exited from Grab. And this is the picture from what they call Kudoplex, their own um, HQ. We start another new fund in 2018, then we start focusing on what we call direct-to-consumer market, uh, including all other hypotheses that we have been built over time. And we launched EV Growth. The reasons why we launched EV Growth because we realized that 70% of Series A Indonesia was seeded by East Ventures. So we work with all close friends, all long-term partners, and I'm so happy that everybody is here in this room today to launch EP Growth. And of course, with another new partner from Japan, uh, Masayoshi-san. We exited Jermati in 2019. And the number of portfolio is keep growing and growing. And if you notice the number of internet users right now from 30 million of 230 million Indonesia population grew into 143 million internet population out of 260 million Indonesia population. We probably the only VC in this region that experienced the delta of 110 and 110 million population of internet, what does it mean? When you are in this search of internet users, the opportunity, whatever that you do, is kind of like throwing something into the big wave 
you, you can see a lot of momentums. You can see all the apps, all the opportunity actually popping up everywhere. And we're happy that we are on the right time, on the right place, and make the right investment. So um, this is the number of portfolio that we invested so far. It's about um, 160 company throughout uh, the years in all East Ventures Southeast Asia Fund. And this is our ecosystem. <laughs>